Hey everybody, Jim here, and oh happy day, uh, we're back in Akiba after over a month of uh, not going to Akiba, um, things are starting to uh, open up a little more, as you can see here, not, you know, 100%, not even close, uh, but you know, you can go out and uh, enjoy a few things. Uh, the maids are obviously out in full force, uh, but I, obviously, first thing I wanted to do, go and, uh, go hit some game shops, go look for some games. All of the game centers are still closed, but, hey, we can go hit some game stores, uh, so, I wanted to drop in a soup potato, it's been a while, and I, I do always like coming here, uh, so, I wanted to dig around, see what's what. First things first, though, I got distracted! Uh, by Dragon Ball stuff. I saw Dragon Ball Uno and I was like, what? Get some Uno and maybe some Dragon Ball socks and underwear? You never know. Uh, yeah. Walked right through the door and got just distracted. Distracted by a lot of stuff today, actually, as you'll, as you'll see. Um, this, their little bargain bin. We can buy 100 yen Famicom games, but it's, it's pretty much all, um, stuff you probably wouldn't want. It's a lot of baseball titles as you can see like baseball the original but like baseball and mahjong stuff like that uh this kind of interesting huge uh stack of uh, uh super famicom games it's it's not gonna be anything good <laughs> you can just buy it in case like you want some i don't know why i think the only person that buys those things is like uh fujita or that guy he's got a bit of a hoarding complex um but yeah so a little bargain bin. Some, uh, not great stuff in it. Uh, these. Taking a look. Uh, sword and sorcery. So they have some Saturn stuff in here. Super cheap. But, um, as we're about to see, like for this, uh, Panzer Dragoon for 500 yen, there's no warranty and they don't have any manuals or anything. And, uh, this game here, Steam Gear Mash. Which is actually a pretty fun little, uh, kind of isometric, uh, action title uh, adventure game for the Saturn. Pretty good. And, uh, this I found, uh, interesting. You can buy just a whole bunch of Super Famicom boxes for various games. Um, it's like 20 bucks, but it's a whole bunch of boxes. But it's, I guess it's kind of a mystery as to what they all are, aside from the front and back one. So if you have loose carts and you're trying to complete games, that might be a kind of affordable way to do it. We're gonna take a quick look at some consoles. We've got some Game Center CX going on, as usual. Um, but these uh, Famicoms, these are like kind of the only ones they're carrying now. They're all AV modded. So uh, you can play them uh, pretty easily. Um, but they are more expensive though. They're like 90 some odd, approaching $100. They're uh, more expensive than the, um, the, they're the Model 2, the NES top loader model. Although these, you know, the deck and two controllers, no hookups though. But um, like the same... AC adapter and uh, AV cord can be used across uh, that NES or that M Model 2 Famicom, Super Famicoms, and N64s. So if you have the, those are like the all-purpose uh, cords. And then we have some Famicom twins. I actually need a new Famicom twin. This here, the black and blue and green one, my favorite because it has a turbo controller. Also the most expensive though. And um, uh, some uh, PC engines as well which are a uh, PC engine still kind of holding its value these days. Um, roughly in the $80 mark for a uh, just a loose PC engine. And then your uh, core graphics here, which is, you know, it's pretty cool. It's boxed and it's complete. I like that. Um, but yeah, so we got some PC engines and all that stuff. I was going to just sort of bypass the rest of the consoles, but you back it up, buddy. I, I have to, I can't, pa it's a Wonder Mega. A Wonder Mega, I want one. I really, really want a Wonder Mega. Uh, they're super cool. If you don't know, it's a Mega Drive and Sega CD all-in-one console produced by Victor, but they're quite expensive. They're like 400 bucks. Um, but boy, oh boy, would I like to have one. And some Master System decks, deck only. I, I do still intend to get a Master System someday. Okay, we're done here. Wait, no, we're not. <laughs> Because, uh, I don't know, I was just like, wow, like, leopard print Dreamcast controller? Okay. That looks, somebody decided that, uh, 
You know, they wanted to turn their thong into a Dreamcast controller. Um, and, you know, some 3DOs, some Neo Geos. The Neo Geo AES console, still uh, rather expensive. Uh, <laughs> pretty damn expensive, like 400 bucks for a... Please, the, the games are already so expensive. Why are you doing this to me? We have loose PC Engine uh, Hue cards, which um, I don't... Uh, I don't like to collect anything in a jewel case. I don't want it loose. Um, but they, they had some pretty cool stuff here. And it's it's less expensive, obviously, than buying them. But Mr. Helly, very good game. One of my uh, one of my favorite Hue card games, actually. Uh, but here we have a lot of the Hue card games proper. So we got uh, Violent Soldier. We have a lot of shoot 'em ups here. So, uh, yeah, Violent Soldier. Uh, one I don't have yet. Been considering getting. Uh, this one, though, I do have and love. Uh, 1943 Kai. Um, this is a uh, sort of a port of uh, kind of an update to 1943. Very cool. And there's other uh, good shooters and stuff there. And then we got our some other games here, like Gunhead, aka Blazing Lasers, uh, Jackie Chan, aka Jackie Chan Action Kung Fu on the PC Engine. Uh, wonderful game. Um, I don't. I've never played the NES version, so I can't say for sure if it's better but it probably is because it looks and sounds and plays great uh, we've got some good stuff here sun sun 2 Xevious, uh gradius which i recently reviewed actually the pc engine port of gradius it's great um and some other stuff here the east games these are usually not so expensive like nine bucks ten bucks fifteen bucks uh that's okay i guess those games are great uh, a lot of these rpgs on the pc engine they don't cost very much because there's a lot of a lot of copies of them around. They sold very well. I guess that was a, a time when PC Engine and RPGs were really popular. Star Proger. That's a fantastic game. They're selling it for like 45 bucks. Um, but it's a really cute parody version of Star Soldier. Uh, and I like it a lot. I've also featured that on the channel before. Um, but here we're going to have a look at some Famicom stuff real quick. Uh, there's lots of box stuff. I guess the... Um, the month or so without uh, really many customers they've been able to restock uh, pretty well in here but they have uh, as you can see lots and lots of boxed games uh, which I wasn't really here for uh, today because I wasn't really doing personal shopping I was uh, picking up stuff for other people uh, so we're over here looking at the uh, loose Famicom carts and uh, some of these are uh, not so not so pricey here we have uh, Kato Ninden Tayande aka Samurai Pizza Cats that's a really uh, fun Japan-only Famicom game by Tecmo. Um, again, a game I've covered in the past. It's uh, really great. Great for import uh, gamers. That's one to pick up if you like your Famicom games. Uh, lots of Konami stuff here. Some of it fairly cheap. You know, like five bucks for Gambari Goemon. And, uh, you know, usually you know, 12, 13 for uh, YY World 2, which is a great game. Seven for uh, Tiny Toons. Here we have our Rockman games. These are more. I found these for a lot cheaper at my local book off. They're like 14, 7. I was actually finding them for 500 yen at my local book off. Uh, Kamen no Ninja Hanamaru. Uh, this is the Famicom version of uh, Yo Noid, actually. Uh, pretty fun game, and they're selling it for like 7 bucks, which is uh, okay on that one. It's, you know, it's it's not as good as 5, but it's still. it's it's. Uh, for Akihabara, it ain't bad. So as you can see here, uh, plenty of loose cards to dig through. And they're, they have in labels. So if you're going to come in here, I would recommend maybe learning how to read some uh, hiragana, katakana, or just learn how to recognize some of the titles in Japanese for your, your more desired stuff. But lots of Namco games here. And lots of the Kunio games, and they're, they're priced pretty good. So uh, Ike Ike, Neketsu Hakibu, great game. Uh, it's five bucks which I don't really think you're going to find it for much better than that really anywhere. Uh, six for the um, uh, soccer, and uh, eight for this was, I believe, Crash and the Boy Street Challenge in the U.S. So that's uh, pretty good. So yeah, a lot of these, the uh, Famicom versions, are going to be a lot cheaper than your uh, the NES counterparts. So you'll want to be uh, getting into those. Like this, for example, a bunch of Dragon Ball games. Most of them aren't very good, but this, for 400 yen... It's, uh, this was released as Dragon Power on the NES, I believe. It's actually Dragon Ball Shin, Shinran no Nazo on the Famicom. Uh, 
kind of fun, but also kind of frustrating game. Uh, we have some of the Adventure Island games here, some stuff by Hudson. Again, most of this stuff, not really too expensive. Star Soldier, all that, you know, like five, six bucks, between five and ten bucks for a lot of it, um, which is, I think, pretty, pretty run of the mill. Uh, some of these are a little, a little pricier. Some of the uh, harder to find, but like you can get Clue Clue Land for five bucks. Uh, this one, this is, uh, I believe, um, uh, Ninja Kun. The Ninja Kun and Jajamaru Kun games, those are fun. You can usually find those for five bucks. And uh, City Connection, classic by Jalico. Uh, they had that for six bucks, uh, which is pretty good. I think the best you're going to find it at like even a book off or a hard off is like three bucks. So the difference between three and six, I mean, it's double the price, but still, it's, it's not killing you. And Super Famicom. Yay! I do love me some Super Famicom. The fruits of the Super Famicom tree. Um, again, looking at lots of boxed games here. Um, all the essentials are here. You got your Nintendo first party stuff. Lots of Capcom, Konami, uh, things like that. They got Sonic Wings, Parodias, Castlevania, the Rockman X games, which are all way cheaper than their North American counterparts. So those are worth getting just to, to save a few bucks. Um, but we got other good stuff here again. Loose carts we're looking at. We got uh, Soul Blazer. All the Dragon Quest games are you know pretty cheap, except for the the ports of Dragon Quest One, Two, and Three. I don't know why those are a little more expensive. I guess they were less common or released a little later. But all the Square stuff is going to be cheap. Here we have all these Yu Yu Hakusho games. So Yu Yu Hakusho Two, a uh, really fun 2D fighter based on like my favorite anime series ever, and you can pick it up for. The low, low price of about five bucks. So that's pretty sweet. And uh, we got the Dragon Ball games, the Super Totons, and the Hyper Dimensions, some Ranma, some Fist of the North Star, all that stuff. Most of that stuff, anything anime related, usually is going to be pretty cheap. We got some shooters here, like Phalanx, Super Alest, which is my favorite on the console. We got uh, some R Type, all that good stuff. Uh, so yeah, if you don't mind loose cards, you can do it right here. Papua Kun. This game is great. Uh, a hidden gem of sorts on the Super Famicom. Great uh, little platformer there I've covered in the past. And it's still cheap. That's one that I recommend import gamers pick up uh, if they want to play a great game without spending a bundle. As we look at some of these Konami games, like Tiny Toons, Ninja Turtles, Goemon. They got a whole bunch of Goemon games. Those are all great. Lots of Mickey Mouse, lots of Rockman. So we can look at the Rockman uh, prices. So like 8 bucks for Rockman X and like 20 for X3 and like 15 for X2. Again, way, way, way less expensive than their North American NES counterparts. And then all these other Capcom games. I like that they group games together by developer because uh, usually that's kind of like I walk in somewhere. If uh, I don't already have it, I'm like, I want some, some Capcom or some Konami. Uh, not so hard to find. So that's really good for people that come in here that can't really read like the Japanese titles and stuff. You can find your favorite developers all grouped together. As we come look at some Dreamcast, for whatever reason, some of these Dreamcast prices, it's, it feels like they've gone up recently. But uh, again, up up front and center, we they always have a lot of Capcom and SNK stuff front and center. Street Fighter, King of Fighters, um, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, all that stuff. Uh, and this one, which is... Uh, an underappreciated Capcom game. This is a Tech Romancer, aka uh, Choco Senki Kikayo, uh, a game I like a lot, and uh, I recommend picking up if you can. It is it's in like the forty dollar range though, which is uh, a bit. And uh, Under Defeat. Good Lord, do I love Under Defeat! One of my favorite shooters on the Dreamcast, made by G Rev, the same people that made uh, Border Down. So it's really fun. Uh, challenging, great game. Again, one of my faves. Uh, loose Mega Drive carts. The thing with the Mega Drive, uh, I don't know why it's... Well, I guess I know why. It's because they didn't... Maybe didn't sell so great in Japan, so they're kind of more of a collector's item these days. Um, but yeah, Mega Drive games right now really uh, holding their value. So a lot of these, you can see on the front of them, it'll say sample, sample. So that means you take it to the counter and they'll show you, uh, you know, copies in varying condition at varying prices. So the better condition, the higher the price. Same thing with the Sega Saturn. Even though the Sega Saturn sold way better than the Mega Drive, it was actually the second 
best-selling console of its generation in Japan. Sega Saturn outsold the N64. Um, still uh, a fairly expensive console to collect for these days. That's why you see all these sample prices. You gotta take these to the back and uh, you know get some options. But uh, yeah, so Saturn, basically anything Sega, <laughs> they're gonna want some money. And Neo Geo as well. It's like they know exactly what the hardcore collectors want. Neo Geo and Sega, these are two companies that have their really uh, hardcore contingents. So that makes things, uh, I guess, especially collectible. Uh, which is, you know, the state of affairs we're in. Uh, and then we have this case. I mean, you know what the case is about. That rarefied air, the super expensive stuff, your blast wins, your, you know, your uh, Radiant Silver Guns, Dracula X, Rini Blaster, which uh, I'm just have no interest in playing the game. It looks like it sucks, but it is astronomically expensive. And of course, another case here, all these Mega Drive games, the rarefied air in there. You got Pulse Man and um, all that kind of good stuff. Probably your your Battle Manias in there. And uh, Comic Zone. Comic Zone is a, an, an absurdly expensive game in Japan. It's over $1,000, uh, which is uh, astounding. Astounding. Uh, so yeah, I think like Comic Zone and WWF Raw are like the monstrously expensive Mega Drive games here. Uh, anyway, uh, no trip is complete without a stop in at the uh, the uh, next floor with all the. Uh, usually, what I like to look at here is the PlayStation stuff. I did pick up um, some of those carts though from the first floor. Uh, those are gonna go to some good homes. Um, but up here we have cool stuff like this, like soundtracks. Even though some of them are pretty damn expensive. The fighting EX layer soundtracks, Sonic Wings, stuff like that. And then uh, a bunch of MSX carts right here next to the soundtracks, which I do not own, have never owned, have never even played an MSX, actually. I think I may have played, if they had one hooked up in Beep, I might have played it, because they usually have, actually, yeah, I think I've played the one in Beep. That's about it. The little sample one they have in Beep. Um, but I do know a lot of people, like uh, Jimmy Hoppa, he likes his uh, MSX games, and I believe there's another fellow on here um, that uh, collects and uh, plays and uh, programs uh, MSX games as well. And we have some more uh, soundtracks here, including this one. I, for whatever reason, I was drawn to this one. It was just, uh, I mean, it looks like this is going to be some good music. I, I That's what I'm getting from the cover. Um, but, you know. So lots of new factory sealed uh, soundtracks for the soundtrack collectors out there. I know there are some of you. you know, there, there are entire like Facebook groups dedicated to that. Uh, but we're here at the PS1 games. PS1, great uh, console to collect for, in, uh, just in general. Because uh, you can usually find, um, as we look at all these biohazard games here, usually you can find lots of games for it and they're usually not so expensive because the PlayStation, as I'm sure pretty much everybody is aware, uh, sold like hotcakes everywhere in the world. So literally millions of them and untold millions of PlayStation games floating around out there. Uh, so yeah, there's no shortage of them. So all these uh, biohazard games, they're in the $20 range, which is more than you usually find them for actually. I guess maybe because there's a, a, re, uh, a rekindled interest in that series with all the remakes and stuff that have been coming out. And of course, the um, Minano Golf, the uh, Hot Shots Golf games, <laughs> 50, 50 yen for the first one, like 200 for the second one. Uh, Street Fighter 03, that's uh, like six bucks for like the best 2D fighter ever. This is my favorite. Um, I guess I could probably go as far to say it's my favorite 2D fighter ever. Definitely my favorite Street Fighter ever. And um, this, an interesting title I covered years ago. Street Fighter 2 movie. An FMV game based on the Street Fighter 2 anime. Uh, interesting title. Not a great game, but interesting. We'll, we'll say that. And more, more, more. Uh, some of this kind of obscure, some of it not so much. A lot of um, PlayStation has a considerable library of games that were Japan exclusive, which is why it's fun to collect for. Einhunder, fantastic shooter by Square, uh, about 20 bucks here in Super Potato. 
um, which is, I don't know, how much does that go for in, uh, I'm thinking North American prices right now, but we got some shooters here for your PlayStation, our types and things like that, Street Fighter EX, Marvel Super Heroes versus Street Fighter, even though those aren't as good as the Saturn ports, um, and some more Biohazard, Spyro, you know, the classics, lots of Konami stuff, Goemon, there were a bunch of Goemon games on the PlayStation in Japan, actually, as well as some Rurouni Kenshin, some Ranma One Half, uh, Mortal Kombat 3, which I, I didn't, um, for whatever reason, did not expect to find a copy of Mortal Kombat 3. I uh, haven't played that game in many a year. Uh, but, you know, uh, passed on it because it's like 20 bucks. I don't feel like paying 20 bucks for Mortal Kombat 3. Uh, we've got Capcom stuff up there, some Rockman, Tron Bond, all that kind of stuff. Like, Tron Bond, that's another one. And the Rockman games in general, way cheaper than their Mega Man counterparts. Police Nuts for the PlayStation, wonderful game. Really great uh, Hideo Kojima goodness. Uh, another one that I've featured on the channel. And uh, another one that has English patches, by the way, for the PlayStation and Saturn versions. Uh, so pick that up, because it's not so expensive. You can patch it, and it's a great game. And uh, quickly at the uh, PS2 games. Um, but they have uh, lots of, on display in particular, lots of um, SNK stuff. All these collections and... Uh, we see SBC Chaos here. Ooh, Initial D Special Stage. Fantastic game. But lots of these um, uh, releases on the PS2 of the uh, Neo Geo games, as well as some random stuff. A lot of the best sellers, you know, your Ape Escapes and Crash Bandicoot's Klonoa. Fantastic. Kingdom Hearts, everything. Uh, but yeah, you can see, uh, you know, they put the uh, kind of the best sellers up front. Put your best foot forward. Uh, you want to put the money beats on top those are the money beats baby um yeah so put your put your you know neo geo stuff your capcom stuff and your your best best sellers like the spiros and king hearts and devil may cry all that kind of stuff because that's the kind of stuff that's going to get people to walk over to that section they see something they recognize oh let me check that out and while i'm here let me peruse uh some old strategy guides here valkyrie no densetsu you saw doki doki panic Solomon's Key, Xevious. I don't know why you need a guide for Xevious. It's a pretty straightforward game. Um, uh, Super Mario Brothers, a guide for that as well. Uh, so these old guides are really cool. They're fun to thumb through. And then just some merch. Uh, these Mai figures probably came directly from the Mai pop-up shop that was open uh, not too long ago. And uh, just more strategy guides, more cool stuff. Um, so it's always fun to have a look around on the second floor if you're a, especially if you're a, a PlayStation and PlayStation 2 fan. Um, but I kind of, you know, a case to peruse as we leave with all the more expensive PS2, PS1 games and such. Um, but that's going to do it for today. I actually did pick up uh, a number of uh, less expensive titles in here to uh, dispense to other people. And I'm sure they're going to be happy with the, the titles I picked up for them. And I had a good time uh, perusing Super Potato. Glad to be back in Akihabara again after being away for over a month. Glad to see the streets starting to liven up a bit. Anyway, everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And do come back next time. Take care, everybody. Goodbye.